you know, whenever like I train for anything and they're always like, oh, this is what it should look like, but then they don't give specific examples or like a suggested way of doing it. You know, last episode, Mike gave out really great suggested like teams to her, really appreciate it because most people don't do that. They're like, oh, here's what you should do. And they give you like, uh, you should be like fire and ice. And then they like ended at that. He gave you specific Pokemon. I think that's so cool. Hey everyone, we are Mike and Test Play, and welcome back to Pokemon Fire Red. Virgin. What? <laughs> Thank you for that. I just I had to like appreciate, appreciate that. that. And also, I apologize for anyone who's really bothered by the fact that I always hit yes when it's switch out your Pokemon because I always forget to hit no. <laughs> anyway, I just thought it was really cool. That, like he literally gave specific examples to specific teams that could beat you the whole th like all the way through the game. Yeah. Where like. I don't know, other people are like, they just give you these like vague words and like, go figure it out. And it's like, yeah. but I like, but but can I have a whole example? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, thank you. And yeah, so last time we, we went over building an in-game team. And then this time, I'm going to be giving much more specific examples, <laughs> mohaha, as we go over some ordinary common in-game mechanics. Look wow, you ditto. ran into a ditto. <laughs> I, I looked for dittos for, you know what? You know what? This is why I'm reading my notes and I'm not <laughs> looking at the screen. So, ordinary in-game mechanics. Part one, STAB. STAB stands for same type attack bonus. And it means that any Pokemon that is using a move that is the same move as its type, either one of its typings, if it's a dual type, will gain a 50% power a 50% boost to the power of that move. It's a very simple mechanic. It means, hey, a water type using a water move is a that water move is going to be stronger than a normal type using that same move. So it's very simple, but the kind of the core tenet of the Pokemon game, stab is always a great thing to have. A uh, 50% boost to whatever the move's power is very helpful. The next part of the in-game mechanics is stats and what stats mean. Let's break it down, really. The first stat is HP. It's how much damage a Pokemon can take. It's pretty simple. What does That's HP stand for? Hit points. Okay. <laughs> Up next is attack and defense. Physical moves, which in the first three generations are rock, poison, ground, flying, bug, normal, ghost, fighting, and steel. They use the physical attack and defense, which are just listed as attack and defense. They use these stats to determine the damage done to a Pokemon. The higher the attack stat of the attacking Pokemon, the greater the damage. And the higher the defense stat of the defending Pokemon, the lower the damage done. For special attack and special defense, it's the special moves. Water, electric, grass, psychic, fire, ice, dragon, and dark. They use these stats to determine the damage done to a Pokemon. Higher special attack means more damage, higher special defense means less damage. Now, interestingly, in later generations, physical moves are shown with... It's it's like a yellow and red kablam, and then special moves are shown with like a... Like on the move summary, it's shown with like little circles i'll put that like up on a blue the screen thing. that that would probably be a good idea i'm not i'm not good at charades so yeah these are vocal charades these are this vocal is just charades. description descriptors uh yeah. yeah i will throw that up on screen. <laughs> and, and don't then, feel bad if you don't understand the difference because i still don't get it sometimes but i get it like if you're punching someone that's physical yeah if you're like sending waves of thought it's special that's exactly how it breaks down in later generations, yes. Yes. <laughs> but in this one, it's still based on types. So that's how you know, okay, if my special attack is high, using one of the See, special attack types is good. See, I still don't get it. <laughs> oh. Okay. No, no, I'm just saying, like, clearly yeah. I, you know. Well. All right. Yeah. I'm, I'm running. Oh, you I can't, can't run, run from, from a that. trainer. <laughs> I meant to hit Pokemon. I'm sorry. It's okay. The last stat is speed. The higher speed determines who moves first in a turn unless a priority move is used. Uh, and moves, you know, quick attack is a priority move, for example. It will say it in the move description if it goes first. The higher a base stat that a Pokemon has, and we've been showing the base stats in all of our ratings along the way, the higher a base stat is, the better that stat will be throughout the Pokemon's growth. Pokemon typically hit their base stat number somewhere around the level 40 to 45 range, although there's a lot of other factors that are huge in determining when they would hit that base. Uh, but the higher the base stat, the higher the stat will be, is the, ba is the basic tenant that you want to be following here. 
The next part of this whole in-game mechanic things is using the correct stats. So for the offensive stats, knowing if a type is physical or special is the key to knowing what Pokemon, what moves a Pokemon should be using. Just because Tauros can learn Ice Beam doesn't mean he should use Ice Beam. And yes, that pulls from an example when I was a kid and I didn't understand this and I was like, why is my Tauros not KOing this dragon? <laughs> yeah. <Me>. Our, suge <laughs> <No. laughs> Our suggested coverage options along the way have been suggestions for the types of moves that specific Pokemon line can actually use, not just learn, based on their statistical p potential. That's why we haven't been listing, oh, well, wait, this Mr. Mime can learn double slap. That's a normal move. But Mr. Mime has terrible physical attacks, so why would you ever waste one of his move slots on a move that's never going to do much damage? The defensive stats, including HP, tell you if it would be safe for your Pokémon to take a certain type of attack. For example here, even though a fighting move is super effective against a Cloyster, it might still do less damage than a, norm a neutral Dragon-type move would do, since Cloyster's defense is amazing, but his special defense is lousy. Um, again, Cloyster is one of the more extreme examples, but this can factor into a lot of other Pokémon too. Zinc, for example, he's really good at taking special attacks, but really poor at taking physical attacks. So even though a super effective water type move might seem terrible, it might still do less damage than just a Machamp hitting with a Brick Break. Um, so knowing what a Pokemon's defensive stats are really tells you how that Pokemon is going to be able to handle moves as they come in. And knowing a Pokemon's speed is essentially knowing, okay, will my Pokemon be able to defeat this opponent without taking any more damage? This game is less helpful. It doesn't show you colors. Oh no, that's that's next video. <laughs> I'll be getting there. That's fair. But yeah, w since you've got the summary up already, um, yeah, Dennis' defense is good on both ends. But somebody else... Uh, up in there, yeah. Yeah, Zinc can take those special attacks, but not the physical ones so much. Yeah. That's, that's pretty much how that works. Part four in the Ordinary Mechanics here is move power. The higher a move's power in the summary screen, the more damage it does. Pretty simple. Uh, but things like accuracy, which can be huge, and PP, which stands for power points, they play a role as well. For example, Surf has 95 power and 100 accuracy and 15 PP, while Hydro Pump has 120 power, 80% 80 ac 80 accuracy, and only 5 PP. Same move type, and Hydro Pump will do more damage, but which would you rather have? The reliable move that does less damage, but more often, and more accurately, or the more powerful move that misses often and doesn't have that many attempts to use it anyway? It's a debate that rages on and on through Pokemon trainers forever, but the rule of thumb is anything with less than 90 accuracy, probably not going to be worth it a lot of the time. Um, it can be, definitely can be. Fire Blast is often chosen because it has 85% accuracy, but 80 or below, and if you have a better option of that type uh, that has 100 accuracy, you're probably going to be going with it. This is such a bad idea. <laughs> it's a funny idea, though. <laughs> Uh, the next part, status moves. What are they good for? The shorter answer is it depends on the status and the, and the time you're using it. But let's actually break down what each status move, or what each status condition does. <laughs> By the lap. I let go. <laughs> <laughs> that is fun. The first status, and we're just going to cover them in the, the order I've researched them because there is no official order on statuses. Paralysis is the first one I'm going to mention, and Paralysis is permanent. It doesn't heal in battle or at the end of the battle. It lowers speed to 25% of the paralyzed Pokémon's total, and can prevent the, the paralyzed Pokémon from moving 25% of the time. Ground-type Pokémon tend to be immune to most Paralysis, but they can be paralyzed by non-electric-type Paralysis moves, so think Stun Spore or Body Slam. In Gen 6 on, electric-type Pokémon are just immune to paralysis, so that's always handy to know. Uh, the next one, Sleep, always prevents the opponent from moving, but they could wake up and attack basically any turn. It's between the first turn for early bird ability holders, 
and between the second turn to a maximum of seven turns in both cases, but early bird tends to be on the earlier side. Uh, so sleep lasts between basically two and seven turns, and if it's early bird one and technically it still is seven, but it's probably going to be much sooner than that. So it's not a permanent status. It, they heal, sleep heals within battle automatically. Poison is permanent, and it does damage at the end of each turn. It's set damage to one-eighth of the Pokémon's total health for ordinary Pokémon, and one-sixteenth of Pokémon's total health, with an increase of one-sixteenth total per turn for the badly poisoned state. That's the state caused by Toxic, Poison Fang, and the second layer of Toxic Spikes. In this game, at least. Other games have more badly poisoned things, but... We're focusing on Gen 3, mostly, for these uh, status moves. Both Poison and Steel-type Pokémon are immune to being poisoned. And for the first four Gens, this does damage 1 point per 4 steps, but five, but 1 point per 5 steps in Fire Red and Leaf Green specifically. No idea why. Uh, but it does damage outside of battle until a Pokémon faints in the first three Gens, or in Gen 4, the Pokémon will beat the poison and cure it automatically when they are left with 1 HP. Uh, later generations remove this feature altogether. That's why, you know, it might feel weird to see, ah, we're poisoned and taking damage in the field. But poisoned is the only status that actually does something in the field, not in battle. So, you know, that was written out of later gens, but... Here which we appreciate. Which we do appreciate. No one wants a Pokemon fainting in the ball on the way to the Pokemon Center. Yeah, it ruins a lot of Nuzlocks. Um, <laughs> next status condition is Burn. Burn is a permanent condition and cuts the attack power of the Burn Pokemon in half. It's the only stat that affects one of the offensive or defensive typings. For now, who knows if that'll change in Gen 9. Um... It also does one eighth set damage, one eighth of the Pokémon's total health, as set damage at the end of each turn. Fire type Pokémon are immune from burns. Freeze is the next one up, and it prevents a Pokémon from moving, but thaws at a random twenty percent chance each turn. It was a hundred percent chance for us. So far, yes. <laughs> um, but it also thaws if a Pokémon is hit by a fire type move, or using or uses a thawing move. Which in Gen 3, the only thawing moves are Flame Throw, or sorry, Flame Wheel and Sacred Fire. So, Flame Wheel, because Sacred Fire is pretty much just the one. Um, and Ice type Pokemon are immune to being frozen. Freeze is also the only status condition which cannot be directly just caused by a move. It's, uh, so far, Freeze has only ever been caused by um, a move that has a chance to freeze, not just if this move hits, it freezes. So, that's interesting. Now, those are all of the statuses that actually show up on the Pokémon screen. A Pokémon can only be afflicted with either Paralysis, Sleep, Poison, Burn, or Freeze, not more than one. However, there are kind of four other statuses that can be stacked along with one of those kind of main status moves. The first one is Attract. Attract is a move which can only be used on a Pokémon of the opposite gender, not going to make any comments there. Uh, it's an old game. And it prevents a Pokemon from moving 50% of the time when they're attracted to an opponent. It is cured by either switching out the Pokemon or fainting the Pokemon who used Attract against you. Um, the real reason it's gender-based is it's an in-game mechanic. They can't calculate real-world attractions uh they can only just use hey this one has this symbol it works on this pokemon so that's the that's the actual reason that has never been updated to reflect society's changes towards a more positive way of thinking about people being whoever they are and love is love um that is the official stance of my contest play absolutely yeah um the next status here though is confusion confusion causes a pokemon to attack itself using a typeless physical move of 40 power, 50% of the time for anywhere between one and four turns. Uh, confusion can also be cured by just switching out the, the afflicted Pokemon. Um, so, you know, that's always an option. The next status is not usually listed as a status, but I kind of count it. Curse. 
Curse is an interesting move. It's one of the most interesting moves, really. When used by a non-ghost type, it increases physical attack and defense while decreasing speed. But while used by ghost types, it takes away half of the ghost type using its HP, and it causes one quarter of the Pokémon's total HP as damage at the end of every turn until the afflict Pokémon either faints, switches out, or the battle overall ends. So, again, it's stackable. You can have a Pokémon who is attracted, confused, paralyzed, and cursed, because uh, all of these kind of extra ones stack on top of each other. And, you know, if a Pokémon, say, poisoned, confused, and cursed, they might just be knocking themselves out very quickly. So, you know, something to note. The other one is Leech Seed. This one is less of a status than anything else, but it does drain one eighth of the Pokémon Afflicted's total HP and actually gives it to the opposing Pokémon who used Leech Seed at the end of each turn. Uh, this effect stays as long as the Pokémon hit with Leech Seed is on the field, um, and again, stacks with absolutely everything else. Grass-type Pokémon, however, are immune to Leech Seed, just as they're immune to the Grass-types or the uh, status-inflicting moves. So, you know, we've always got that. Now, this is where we're going to throw up a chart about Catch Rate. Catch Rate is enormously confusing. Basically, here's what you need to know. If you lower a Pokémon's health to red and give them one of the main status conditions, they are easier to catch. And then Ultra Balls are better than Great Balls, Pokeballs, or Great Balls are better than Pokeballs, and then Specialty Balls do what they do, just read the ball description. So the catch rate is enormously complicated, it's all sorts of math that doesn't really need to go into a game that's this simple, but um, yeah, that's catch rate. <laughs> so anyway, it goes into status moves, because who should know status moves? Well, any Pokémon who you want to help you with catching Pokémon should know one, typically Paralysis or Sleep, since they both restrict the opposing Pokémon from moving, increase the catch rate, and do not deal damage and cause the Pokémon you are trying to catch to faint. Defensive Pokémon are also do better with status moves overall, since they tend to do less damage with ordinary attacks, and the extra damage slash restrictions can be helpful. The next part of our ordinary in-game mechanics here is stat changes. What do they mean? I'm sure you've seen it a lot. Uh, you know, you've been leered or growled or smoke screened or something. So let's break down what stat changes actually entail. To start with, every stat starts at a normal value. Um, and the five main base stats, everything but HP, can change in battle by up to six changes. Or, sorry, six stages. These changes are strange. Increases for attack, defense, special attack, special defense, and speed. Each increase increases the stage by 50%, or increases the stat by 50% of that Pokemon's original total, a fixed 50%, so it doesn't stack. So one stage up is 1.5 times the original total, two stages would be two times, and six stages, the maximum, is only four times the original total. Decreases, though, are weird. One stage down is 66% of the original total. Two stages is 50%. Three stages is 40%. Four stages is 33%. Five stages is 28.5%. And then six stages is 25% of the original stat total. So, basically, it's one quarter compared to four times. So it does work work out in the end, but along the way it's really weird and confusing and I don't understand it. Mean in the meanwhile, accuracy and invasion are in battle only stats, and all Pokemon across the board begin with the same one times multiple for both their own moves that they're using, which is accuracy, and the opposing Pokemon's moves, which is evasion. Their increases and decreases, up to six stages, just like the main base stats, are strange and also directly opposite one another. So, for increases to accuracy, um, it increases by one-third, so 33%, for each stage. Therefore, the maximum at six stages is three times the original accuracy. So, if a Pokémon is plus six accuracy, a move that originally had 30 base accuracy will now have 90 base accuracy. It's kind of the only reason I can think of for having more than two times. Um, 
The decreases to accuracy, however, are another weird, the math doesn't seem to be consistent way. One stage down is 75% accuracy, uh, and the, the percentage here is based on the move's original accuracy. So it's a 75% multiplier to that accuracy. Two stages down is 90%. Three stages down is 50%. Four stages down is 42.8%, five stages down is 37.5%, and then six stages is 33% accuracy, again reaching that, you know, accuracy can either be three times or one third at the far most extremes. Evasion, however, those changes affect the opposing Pokémon's essential accuracy, not the actual accuracy stat, but the move coming in to hit them with increases being strange. Um, the increases are, well, one stage up is the opponent's accuracy becomes 75%. Two stages, the opposing accuracy is 60%. Three stages, 50. Four stages, 42.8. Five stages, 37.5. And six stages, again, the opposing move has 33% accuracy of what it normally has. Decreased evasion, meanwhile, improves the opposing Pokémon's accuracy by one-third for each stage, um, again topping out as making opposing moves three times more accurate at six stages. So they are, even though the two stats are different, uh, they are polar opposites to one another. Makes sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Okay, cool. So part seven, there's only two parts left, I promise. Part seven is abilities. How important are they? Really depends on the individual ability. Generally, just knowing what an ability does is key here. Um, and you you read the, a Pokemon's ability on the page screen, so Tess, if you wouldn't mind uh, just pulling up the, the summaries once more here. Um, so, you know, for Pi here, uh, go, go over one. Yeah. His ability is Compound Eyes. Raises accuracy. Helpful. Next up. Uh, Guts. Ups attack if affected by a status condition for, for Dennis. Also can be helpful. Early bird. Wakes up quickly from sleep. Um, and then you have Torrent, which ups water moves if his HP is down. So a lot of abilities are situational, or they can just be overall helpful, or they can just not have an impact at all. It also tells um, you what it is, which is super helpful in this game. It is very helpful, yes. yes. It, it, that's, that's always a, a positive there. Um, but it, can a can an ability cause or even cure a status? Do you want them to? Um, do they? Does it boost the power of a specific type or move? Or if a Pokemon has a status, do they prevent critical hits or boost the stat in a particular weather further? Or do they give a Pokemon a boost to an HP or stat if they are hit with a type of move? Does it make a Pokemon immune to a weakness? Uh, left, uh, you know, levitate on an electric type, something like that. But generally speaking, when you catch a Pokémon, look at the ability. It will tell you what it does and how useful that will be. When, a Poke when an ability is a big help to a Pokémon, we have noted that in our ratings. When it is more situational, we haven't really, because it's situational. It doesn't really play that big a role in-game. Abilities are massively important to the metagame, but in-game they are usually just more nice to have or neutral to a Pokémon's use. There are, of course, a few examples along the way where a Pokémon is severely weakened by its ability, but those are few and far between. So knowing your team's abilities is important, and knowing the abil abilities of the opposing Pokémon is very helpful at times, uh, but all of that comes with time and learning as you go through the game and play more Pokémon. So. You know, you don't ever have to memorize every Pokemon's abilities right from the start if you're just playing in-game. And the last part that we're going to cover here, the last common part of in-game mechanics, is weather. Weather mechanics can change dramatically from generation to generation. So for now, we're only going to cover the four major weather conditions that are in Fire Red and Leaf Green, because that's the game we're playing, and if I try to go over every generation's weather mechanics, it would we would be here for the next hour. So you want to know what they are? Yes. <laughs> the first weather is sunny! Sunny weather increases the power of fire moves by 50%, decreases the power of water moves by 50%, doubles the speed of Pokémon with chlorophyll ability, and it also changes specific moves. Solar Beam no longer needs charging in the sun. Thunder's accuracy is reduced to 50%. 
Synthesis, Morning Sun, and Sun uh, and Moonlight, weirdly, all heal two thirds of the Pokemon's total HP instead of half. And Sunny prevents, as in it cannot inflict while it's sunny, but does not cure the freeze condition, which is something I didn't actually know until this game started, or until I did the research here, so you learn something new every day. Rain, however, increases the power of water type moves by 50%, decreases fire type moves by 50%, doubles the speed of Pokemon with the Swift Swim ability, and again, changes specific moves. Thunder is now completely accurate, like Aerial Ace accurate, not just 100%. Solar Beam's power is halved. Synthesis, Morning Sun, and Moonlight now all heal one quarter HP instead of half. So it's very specific changes for the most part. Sandstorm does damage uh, equal to 1 16th of the total health of any Pokemon that is not rock, ground, or steel typed. And it gives opposing moves 80% accuracy if the Pokemon has the Sand Veil ability, which some Pokemon do. It also changes specific moves. Solar Beam's power is again halved. Synthesis, Morning Sun, and Moonlight all now heal one quarter HP instead of half. And the other changes to Sandstorm do not happen until later generations. So definitely keep that in mind. It's not the cure-all that it can be for, say, rock types later on. The other last weather is Hail. Hail does damage of 1 16th total health to any Pokemon that is not Ice type at the end of each turn. It also changes, again, specific moves, Solar Beam, Half Power, Synthesis, Morning Sun, Moonlight, all healing one quarter instead of halves. Uh, all these weather types will do different, sometimes much better things than other games, but for Fire Red, that is the whole sum of what they do. And that is the full breakdown of all the ordinary in-game mechanics you're probably going to run into And in. Why are we in the Seafoam Islands? I have no idea. I just wanted to walk around. <laughs> well, that works. <laughs> so, um, yeah. I ah, hope you... It's a gold bat. It is a gold bat. <laughs> and I hope you enjoyed this breakdown. I hope you can kind of learn something from it if you didn't know it already. Did, did it seem... You know, helpful? Absolutely. 100,000 million bajillion percent. Were you paying attention or just running around? Um, I completely was paying attention. I know exactly what you said. Do, would you <laughs> like me to reiterate? Reiterate? Yes. Okay, so first. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> See you next time. <laughs>